you know, instead we could sit here and try to exchange some information in an exploratory way, and you could come away, you know, somewhat changed, and I can come away somewhat changed, and that's a good deal. And then maybe we'd enjoy that if we did it in proper proportion, and we think, you know, we could have another conversation, and that would be the beginning of a friendship, right? And you can see an ethic emerging out of that. Now, it's more complicated than that in this situation, because we have to do that in a way that engages you. And that means we have to craft our gestures and our words in a way that brings you in as participants in the conversation. You might say, well, it's not a conversation because you're on stage. It's like, if it's not a conversation, your mind is going to wander. You're going to start thinking, you know, I might as well check my phone. Or you're going to be thinking about other problems that you have in the back of your mind. They're going to come to the forefront. It's a conversation if the two of us are capturing your interest because we're watching you and paying attention to the situation and ensuring that the points that we continue to make are keeping your attention. Now, if you're a public speaker, you can tell that. One of your 12 rules is compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to who someone else is today. That's why you tell your kids, by the way, maybe he's more skilled than anyone else on the playing field. But he's kind of a jerk, you know, and he won't pass to his teammates. And if he scores, he takes all the credit and does a little dance. And if he loses, he whines. And so you're embarrassed. And you tell your kid, look, you know, for all your skill, I'm a bit ashamed of you. And the kid says, what's your problem, dad or mom? What's your problem? 